I would describe the Tales of Hoffman as magical, fantastical, scary. It's full of humor, it's full of passion, danger. It's all about understanding the woman and the rich nature of the woman and how many different colors she has and how special she is. <laughs> this opera is really a masterpiece. Offenbacher, uh, he created something special. It's a little bit of Alice in Wonderland's rabbit hole. You into a kaleidoscopic German romanticism. E.T. Hoffman was uh, the real uh, poet uh, who uh, actually uh, wrote all those stories. The way this opera is constructed, you take a real person, a real person's writings, and then you put him inside his own stories as the central character. He's very near the end of his life. Uh, Hoffman died at the age of 45, and he was an alcoholic. The story begins in a tavern. He's trying to get drunk, trying to feel uh, maybe more deep than write maybe something special. When you are in a pub, the most of the things, it's after a beer and another, what do you start saying? You start telling stories. Click, lock. Click, lock. Click, lock. He has just been at the theater watching Stella perform in Don Giovanni. Stella is the one, she's the one for me. He sings a line where he's, he's talking about ma maîtresse, my mistress. So within Stella, this woman that he's infatuated with, this opera singer, three stories emerge. The side of her that's like a mechanical doll, he calls Olympia. The side that's like courtesan, he calls Julieta. The side of her that is a, an artist, he gives her the name Antonia. So the sense of it is that we're seeing him create these stories through the influence of seeing this woman he loves on stage and sort of knowing he can't quite have her. The three villains are all the same character. It's a character that's actually in, in, in the pub listening to him. Moi, I am doing what we uh, call the four villains. Lindorf, Coppelius, Dappertutto, and Dr. Miracle. The villains is actually the temptation, the damnation, the, you know, there is all in this guy that wants to attract, he wants to corrupt Hoffman. I think what we would call it in English is the turn of the phrase. Offenbach is a master at the turn of the phrase. He can turn your mind upside down in eight bars. It's a challenge, but it's very exciting. This music, eh? so strange, so particular, so uh, beautiful also by Offenbach. It's uh, like a melange of French music, uh, opera comique, and then uh, German influences. And then um, it's a melange of orchestra personality, uh, where there's uh, a lot of passages of uh, virtuosité. All the things on stage that you're seeing and experiencing and the music you're hearing are all metaphors of something that is very much to each human being's life experience, jealousies, frustrations, euphoria. It's a story about love in all of its aspect. It means love about the human being, but love about the art. It describes the way that we enter into a relationship with somebody and then we discover whether we're compatible or not. I hope the audiences reflect on their love affairs too, you know, the ones that have passed, the ones that are in the future, their current one. I'm a pretty hard nut as far as operas go. I don't know why, but the tales of Hoffman still makes me cry at the end. It's the only one that does. So I'm hoping that my audience goes out with a tear in their eye too. I find it incredibly moving. <laughs>